to frame some of these situations. And the laws that I'm about to tell you about have all changed in the last four to five years, which is part of the reason I got to learn about them as the advocacy work was going on to change these laws. So the first thing to, to remember is what I was telling you earlier about the importance of tourism for Nepal's economy. 25% of Nepal's GDP comes from tourists. Not just the people who go on the expeditions to climb Everest, but the people who come to Pokhara to look at the mountains or to go to Chitwan to see the, the elephants. And my favorite are the long-nosed crocodiles. They're very funny looking. <laughs> very important for Nepal. But even more important than tourism is the 35% of the economy that comes from remittance. Foreign migrant workers sending money home. There are countries which have a larger volume of remittance than Nepal, but in terms of percentage of the GDP, Nepal is number one. Wow. So migrant workers sending money home is a major part of that. 60% of Nepal's economy is related to the movement of people, either tourists coming in or Nepalese going out. So we talked about, right, how much of an impact COVID had on Nepal. But within the migrant labor force of Nepal, there is actually a hierarchy of experiences. And the lowest status migrant workers are the seasonal migrant workers who go down to India, work in some very difficult construction, uh, road construction, building construction, women work in domestic service, um, all of these jobs are very vulnerable to uh, both labor exploitation as well as sexual exploitation. Come back after a few months with maybe $100 equivalent in earnings. But you saw in the milk camp story, right? That's, that's the reality. What's the cha you know, It's very challenging for families, but you need that cash, right? As she was talking about, she needed money for her school kids uniform. I mean, I mean, his mother was so proud of him, right, with that blue uniform. That costs seven to ten dollars, right? School books cost more. You have medical supplies. It costs subsistence level agriculture doesn't cut it. So people do this seasonal migrant work. So we've got lots of projects in that sustainable livelihoods area, right? This is a, setting up small businesses for dry goods, uh, uh, tailoring, sewing, small machine repair, other, you know, the, the dairy projects, all of this is part of that. Financial literacy training, also a component of that as well. Important work, and we target a lot of work with families who uh, are in need of seasonal migrant income. So trying to get folks to have enough of a business that they can earn, doesn't take much income, to make it less desirable to do that seasonal migrant work. But there's a lot more migrants than just that. Oh, so you're trying to keep them in country. The, 